Hey guys, all the information in this video is taken from the Century 21 accounting textbook. Today we're going to do the work together 5-9. Um, in, in my previous video, I discussed how um, backwards that I felt like we should total, prove, and rule first. In this video, I'm going to just follow what the textbook says. So, first thing, a blank schedule of accounts payable is given in the working papers. Use Golden Fabrics Cash Payments Journal from Work Together 9-4 and the accounts payable and general ledgers from Work Together 9-3. Your instructor will guide you through. So, we start right here. Here's the cash payments journal at the bottom of the page. Then we have the accounts payable ledger. We have the general ledger. And we continue on with the general ledger. So let's start with step one. It wants us to post the transactions from the cash payment journal to the accounts payable ledger. So the only things that we're posting right now is anything that would go to an accounts payable ledger. So like this, this first one, accounts payable ledger. So Gray Manufacturing Incorporated would be the first one that we would end up posting. So let's go to find Gray Manufacturing Incorporated. Gray Manufacturing Incorporated. And um, we want to just write the date, whatever it was. If you look on the back side of your paper, you can see that it's the third. The post reference number for this one is CP10. The amount is a debit of 1640 and if this is a credit balance, we want to subtract them. 1640 we got a zero balance. Good, we paid off Greg's thing. So, Greg's account. We paid off whatever we owed to Greg's account. The vendor number was 220, so we want to record 220 in our um, post reference. The next one we're going to do is find the accounts payable because we're only posting to the accounts payable ledger this 426 from Westland Supply. 426 Westland Supply. So I find Westland Supply. The date was the 16th. Post reference was cash payments 10. And it should be a debit of 4. 26. It's a credit balance and we're using a debit here, so credit to debit, that's subtraction. And you should get a total of 566. So let's check back. Did we do all of the accounts payable? Well, we forgot to post. So let's do the post reference is 240 for Westland Supply. 240, I get that number from here, 240. Okay, so now we got the post ref. Let's just double check. Accounts payable, post ref, accounts payable, post ref. Okay, we posted to the accounts payable ledger. Post transactions from the cash payments journal to the accounts payable ledger. Good, we did it. Step two, total prove and rule the cash payments journal. So I'm going to use a calculator to add up the totals. I was checking to see if they have, in the textbook, they give a great resource, this little um, in, um, calculation kind of graph, but they do not give us that in the working papers. So we'll have to make our own. So if you add up the first row, first column, we want to single line it to say, hey, we're adding. Adding up all of those, I get 1,917.02. Nothing in the credit. Next one, add those two up, I get 2,066. That one's an easy one, 3,280. And the last one, 3,000. $950.22. Okay? So, now how do I prove it? Well, I have to make sure my debits equal my credit. So what I do is a little nice little T count over here. 
and I put the abbreviations, debit, credits. Well, I'll take my debit balance. 1917.02. And then I take my next debit balance. 2066. Then I find my credits. 3280 credit, it tells us. And cash credit. 3950.22. So I know I'm getting 02 cents, that's for sure. Then we do some mental math here. Let's see, 9389. 6 plus 6 is 12, 13. 3983023902. Beautiful. They equal each other. So we're in the clear. Debits equal credits. We proved it. Let's go ahead and double line it that we proved it. Of course, I don't want to forget that it's the end of the month, so it's 31. We want to put the word totals. And now we know that, that row is the totals. It's proved and we're good to go. We can start posting. So let's turn back to the work together problem. Post the cash payments journal to the general ledger. So we just go right down each one. Utilities expense, let's start there. We just want to post the general. We don't want to worry about that right now. We already got the accounts payable debits. So general, utilities expense. So we find the account that says utilities expense. It's on the last page. I'm getting October 2nd. The amount was a debit of 124. The post reference is CP10. And two debits mean that we add 1072.59. Post reference is 6170. Good. So now we have this one's already finished for us. Let's go on to purchases. So Let's find the purchase one in the general ledger. Purchases. Okay, the date is 9, October 9. Um, the post reference is CP10. The amount is a debit of 1575 and we're adding it to get 95,703.25. Post reference, 5110. 5110, post reference. Then we know where to find that if we made a mistake. Next one is supplies, but it's office supplies. So we want to find office supplies up here let's go ahead and write 12 post reference is cp 10 office supplies was a debit of 64 a debit plus a debit is going to give us 3,024 3,248 my bad <coughs> excuse me 2248 and 17 cents for the office supplies. Then it's 11.45 for the post ref. Okay, we already posted that. Let's go to office supplies again. The date is 31. The post ref CP10. The amount is 48.15. And a debit and a debit added together here. We look at the running balance and we get um Three thousand two hundred ninety six and thirty two. Then we want to do a post reference eleven forty five. Eleven forty five. Okay, supplies for store. So we go to our store and we have thirty one is the date. Post reference CP ten fifty seven eight. 
18 and we add that together because they're both debits and we get $4,237.36. That was bad. 36 cents. Okay, post reference 11.50. Miscellaneous expense. Back page. We use the same date, 31st. CP 10. The amount was a debit of 46, nope, 47.64. Two debits, you add them together, and we get a total of 2,537.61. Okay, the post reference is 6135. 6135. Right, miscellaneous. Okay, next one, we have um, cash short and over. So we want to go with, oh, wrong page. Cash short and over, the date is 31. The, the post ref is CP10. It's a debit balance of 105. And two debit balances, you get $21 there. Post reference is 6110. Okay, so last thing that we need to do is post a check mark underneath each one to say, hey, okay, we did these. These columns are posted. Now we need to post these columns. The accounts payable debit goes into the general ledger accounts payable, not the the um, accounts payable ledgers, but just into the accounts payable general ledger account. I'm getting the date 31, CP 10, we have a debit balance here of 20, 2066. 2066 and um, if we have a running credit balance we subtract them and we still have the bigger balance on the credit side so it's eight thousand seven hundred seventeen dollars and fifty three cents accounts payable is two one one zero that's the post ref at the bottom then we have purchases discount which is on the last page purchases discount so we go ahead and write the 31st and post ref CP10. It is a credit balance of $32.80. And we go ahead and we add it because they're both credits to get a total of $654.28. $5,120 is the post reference. Last one is the cash. So we find the journal that says cash. We write the date, 31. We write CP, 10. The amount is a credit of $3,950.22. And this is a running debit balance, so we subtract it from the credit balance to get 12,504.97. Oh, Okay, so we posted everything. We need to make a post reference on this page to the cash account, 1,110. Step three says prepare a schedule of accounts payable. So that's the last thing that we learned. And you wanna find the accounts payable schedule area. And it's always nothing new here. Who, what, when. Who, it gives us golden fabrics what schedule of accounts payable abbreviating and the date is the end of the month so October 31 20 whatever year it is okay then we just copy down 
the information from this general, from this accounts payable ledger. So we start at the top and we work our way down. So I will do it in abbreviations to save time, but please write out the whole thing. The first one is called Coastal Company. And the balance for Coastal Company, 2238 Notice there's only a credit balance, that's all you could have. So you're gonna write 2000 230 and 88 cents. You go right down the list now. Gray manufacturing. So Gray Manufacturing Incorporation. They owe nothing, but we want to record it. We owe them nothing. Next one is Pacific Supply. I'm just going right down the general ledger or the accounts payable ledger. I'm going right down the accounts payable ledger. Next one, 4,177.65. Okay, next one, Westland Supply. Then I'm going to do Yeatman Designs. Westland Supply. They have a total balance of 566. And Yeatman Designs has a total balance of 1,743. Okay, then I'm going to write total accounts payable because we put it all in. Why are we putting all these numbers in? Because we want to know how much total accounts payable is so that we can double check with our accounts payable general ledger account. When I add these together, I get $8,700. $17.53. Let's double check that with our, so again, I'm taking that from the accounts payable ledger form. I'm gonna zoom out, accounts payable ledger form. That's on page number 200. And when I zoom out and look back to the accounts payable, these two numbers should match. This is my general ledger. Do they match? Yes, we got it right. So that finishes the problem for today. I know that it is lengthy. Um, try to do the on your own.